This thing is so wide, even your mum couldn't eclipse it. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tilders Tech. If you're new here, I'm recently the four-piece variety of Wookiee Triple XL. And yes, I'm a professional banter machine. If you weren't aware, this is like at least 10% of my purpose and existence in this life. Um, and that's hence why we started off with a Yo Mama joke. Because this 30-inch ultra-wide is now genuinely like one of my absolute favorites. And I hope to catch your attention with that because I wanted to tell you why. I never really wanted an ultra-wide. I have a friend who had an ultra-wide and I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. It's like, how do you see that much screen? Except for the fact that with this very slight, like 1800R curve that we have on this here MSI, it actually feels like you have peripheral vision. While the top to bottom is more like a 25 inch with extra, it's not quite a 27 inch in the heart with extra. It's more like a 25 inch with extra. The 200 hertz refresh rate that this thing has, plus its color palette and absolutely excellent contrast ratio, and honestly being one of the best VAs I've tested to date, it's genuinely converted me. And there's a kicker. It also comes in IPS in this exact same format. So if you want to spend a little bit extra for the pixel response time, you can. And that 200 hertz just seems like a, a, a very good time. It's not a little bit extra, it's quite a lot extra. But with this being the VA variant, I'm very glad to have tested in the in this variant. And MSI's kind of overkilled this in all of the right sort of ways. So let's start off with what's in the box. So obviously get Manuel as per usual with a little sticker telling you that this is the worst energy rating from the EU. Um, and then you get a power cord, which is a normal clover on the other end. So you can replace it. You don't have to use this two prong variant, which is nice because these are kind of dime a dozen because of laptops and such. You get a very nice display port cable, quite a beefy boy with the um, connectors that you have to push button to release, which we obviously like a lot because that's never going to fall out. The daintiest little HDMI cable that I've seen um, so far. It's very slim and light and cute and sweet uh, little HDMI cable. And then a USB that comes out to a full USB 3 printer type cable port on the other end, which is uh, the proper full range USB 3 because on the back of the monitor, it's got a couple of outs for that. And finally, a couple of standoffs for doing some base mounting if you were to use this on a desktop arm. Not that I think you would because this has genuinely one of the best stands I've seen for a monitor of this type. The Periscope neck has extreme travel. If I'm, I'm actually going to move my bobblehead out of the way because look how low that goes. And then all the way back up, it's got some extreme travel. It's also got swivel, which I was quite impressed by, and a lot thereof. It can almost do a right angle and or, or get perpendicular at least with these uh, prongs that are coming out of the base stand over there. So that's really, really good. And um, yeah, then it's still got tilt as well. So you can run this in a portrait mode. Um, you will have to do a little bit of tilting, as it were, back and forth over here, which also has very good range. So you can have it up facing down, or if you're very tall, then uh, you will be able to face this up and get an absolute perfect angle. No matter your height, build or size or your desk area, the stand is exceptionally good in its travel. So you can get this thing really dead on. And it's quite easy because of that ever so slight curve that it has. Around the back as well, you'll notice a giant light beam in the middle. It does have a mystic light connection. Not that you're going to be looking at it very often, but it's a nice little touch over there. And then on the far left, there's a curved gaming sticker over there, like sitting on the back left over there um, for the optics uh, line, as well as the little joystick, which then controls pretty much everything. Underneath the bottom over here at the front, under the chin is actually where you find the power button that sits under there. So yeah, it's kind of nicely put together in that regard. And the ports, it's more of the same. You've got on the far end, the AC connection in, you've got the USB in that then splits into two of those outs, 5 volt 900 amps for those two. You've got a display port, you've got two HDMI connections into this, and then a type C as well as a 3.5 more audio jack. So you've got a myriad of different connections and you'll be able to set this up and connect to it in any of the ways that you could possibly hope to. And with this ultra wide format and with a dual HDMI connection, 
it does mean that you are going to be able to use it like across multiple consoles uh, and with a PC or multiple PC setups into it and then just switch between them on the fly. The OSD, speaking of, is exactly the same as it was before. It's their general one that they use on all of their monitors now and it's nice, simple and straightforward. One thing that was very unique to this monitor that I haven't really seen on a lot of the other monitors from MSI are the presets and the variances in the presets were quite extreme and I found that the racing one had the best nicely saturated like super super vibrant color palette that you can then work backwards from it does however smash the image enhancement to its absolute fullest which actually works in this instance it's less of a liability and more of an additional feature that's really really nice to have compared to the other monitors and stuff that i've tested from them the image enhancement with the va almost always created more smear and actually made it kind of worse in that regard but in this instance on weak medium and on kind of strong depending on the title i find weak and medium were generally the best but it actually made quite a difference to the overall sharpness and didn't increase smear which is a huge plus for a va and i attribute that i think to the pixel quantity across more so than up and down and i noticed that when i was playing when i was going left to right in general it was pretty good there was one or two areas where i did find some smear especially with high contrast it's so like say a dark blue on a white background for instance then the blue would smear a bit but it was much better than it had been previously on on especially on first gen va which i've still got a panel from which um, yeah it's it's really bad so compared to that it's moved on significantly in the right direction up and down was more ill affected with that but while testing, I played a myriad of games. And I mean, I actually played more than I would for and longer than I would for most games because I really wanted to see the effects of ultra wide because it's not something I've tested extensively. I've only done one other review, which actually never saw the light of day. This being my first ultra wide review, I had to go in a bit more deep dive. And initially, I assumed for sim racing that it was going to be fantastic, which it was. It gave me some somewhat peripheral vision and let me like see out the window of the car when I was behind the wheel in that view. So. It, that was really, really nice to have, honestly. And the 200 hertz refresh rate does not go missing in that environment. It feels really responsive and input and stuff was absolute chef's kiss. When I played FPS games, it was, a, I would say, a mixed bag. In general, I actually quite liked it for Tarkov. I found that the big open world environment stuff was absolutely fantastic with that. And if you're playing games with big, large open environments, you're just going to see more. And you're just going to have a kind of, like I say, an effect of almost feeling like you've got some peripheral vision, which is really, really good in those sorts of environments. In something like Counter-Strike, I still think 16 by 9 is probably going to be better because you're holding narrow corridors in most instances or narrow uh, points of contact. So I don't see it becoming a competitive FPS panel. But for MOBA, it's kind of like cheating in a way because I can just see more of the lane that I'm in. If you're in an orientation that stretches across the screen, I can just see more than other people. I can just see further up and down the lane, which is kind of like I say, like having a bit of cheats vibes. The quality of the colors and the contrast between them are extremely good on VA. That's one thing where media playback is considered, then this is sort of a no-brainer. If you're doing a lot of viewing of widescreen in uh, uh, movies and media and stuff like that, then look no further the va is definitely going to be the one you want in that regard it's much better than the ips the ips gives a very washed out feel a lot of the time uh, it's kind of over con the contrast ratio is just not as good is basically the long and the short of it but for competitive gaming then you've got that smear it could be a little bit off-putting but if you're playing a lot of big open world environment games stuff even like gta rp and audio 2 etc of, this is just going to be like absolutely exceptional for that cyberpunk those kinds of games 10 out of 10 12 out of 10 so if that's more your kettle of fish maybe you want to consider an ultra wide because it, it really does add to the experience it is also and you might know it's quite big so it's going to take out a lot of desk space and it weighs an absolute ton it's very heavy like deceptively heavy i was like why is this thing weigh more than a small planet 
Um, it doesn't quite have its own gravitational pull, but it's getting close to being that heavy. It's very, very heavy. They do also make this, like I said, in an IPS variant. It's like another 1,500 bucks on top of this price. So it's a, I thought at 8,000, the VA version with the 200 hertz looked really competitive and cool. So I really, I'm very glad that we did pull one for review. It's absolutely sick. Um, all, all things considered, I'm, I'm very much converted on the idea of ultra wide. Um, as I'm getting less into competitive spaces for FPS like CS and more into like do you know MOBA um, and RTS and that sort of stuff, I'm actually seriously considering going ultra wide for my next panel because of this panel. This thing in IPS just seems like a dream to me. Um, for video playback and stuff, I would miss the VA. That's the only thing on, on VA. The colors and the contrast between them are just kind of untouchable. So yeah, if you're doing more casual gaming and media, get the VA variants. If you want that very sharp pixel you know, response time, then rather go for the IPS. The colors and stuff will probably also be very good. And with some tuning, you'll probably get there as well. Um, as I say, this one, the image enhancement actually works. And I would su suggest in general, just leave it on a weak setting for default with the racing mode. If you put it on the racing mode um, from the presets and then you go into the image enhancement and you turn that down to weak, it's flipping incredible, like how sharp and nice it is. Um, it doesn't have the most pixel density under the sun. But yeah, um, um, we like it. We like it very much. For some racing and stuff, it was flipping amazing as well. Like, and the overall package with the built-in, you know, a USB hub and giving you a 3.5 mil jack and even a Type-C at three amps out of the monitor. It's kind of nice. I think you can see it's, it's, really really nicely configured i was a little bit worried about this base stand but because of how much swivel we have over here i mean look at that you literally can go perpendicular nearly with this arm piece on the side so yeah that's not really an issue when you do have it on your table because you can't really sit right on top of it to be able to see the whole thing it's just, it's just yeah i'm converted ultra wide's very very nice emerson's done a very good job especially with the stand and the finishing parts and stuff the panel quality and the colors also amazing and uh, i'm surprised because their monitors in general um i've done three now and they felt a little bit washed out in certain terms and i had to do quite a lot of tuning to get the colors and stuff right but this had a much better preset control setup so yeah package everything eight thousand rand for that for that amount of monitor if with 200 hertz refresh rate it's like esports ready ultra wide gaming it's kind of sick anywho let me stop rambling. That's all I've got for you on this MSR 50 inch ultra wide 200 hertz 2560 by 1080 ultra wide 21 by 9 monitor. It's been a treat. I'm going to go now and play with this until I have to take it back tomorrow. Until then, hope you guys stay safe, keep well, and I will see you on the flip side.